Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. One of my favorite things about breeding boas are the holdbacks, the baby boas I personally select to remain here and grow up as future breeders. Today I want to give you guys a look at some of my holdbacks from 2021. So if you didn't get a boa from me this year, be sure to stay tuned because this will give you a pretty good idea about what to expect from me in 2022. And so I always love looking at holdbacks. It's always, it can be kind of a difficult decision sometimes when I have lots of nice, beautiful baby boas. Looking at the holdbacks, I always try to think about where I'm taking the projects and what direction I want to take them when I'm selecting my holdbacks. And sometimes I get animals that I wasn't really expecting and I decide based on these animals that I want to take a project in a certain direction. And I'll show you some examples of that in a couple of minutes. First, I want to show you guys some of my beautiful Suriname boas from 2021. And I produced some Prometheus bloodline Suriname boas. This is actually the father. The Prometheus bloodline of Suriname red tail boas is a bloodline I established and it's famous for its really high contrast, its overall kind of dirty wild look with lots of background markings, and of course, his long red tail. And this is the male who sired the litter. This is a guy who was born here in 2014 and really excited to have the first, second generation litter of animals from this bloodline born this year from this father. So let's look, take a look at some of his babies. I'm gonna get up my close up lens and give you guys a close look. Here's a nice male Suriname that I held back. So this guy, as I mentioned, was from my Prometheus bloodline. And I crossed to my other main bloodline and I was really excited about the results here. This is a project that was uh, quite a few years in the making. And so this guy just instantly stood out from the rest of the litter. He just had this color even before he shed. And I just love the colors on this animal. This guy combines the high contrast and the crazy patterns of the Prometheus bloodline with the beautiful colors of the other bloodline. Let me see if I can show you some details on this guy. Okay, there's some more details of this guy. and Just a really breathtaking animal. Just love the pattern and color on this guy. And then of course you've got this long red tail. Oh, he's trying to get away. I was originally only planning on keeping that one male from the litter, but I just love this guy too. I just couldn't let this guy go. I mean, he's not quite as colorful as that male, but I just love the saddles on this guy, and you just can't beat that tail. It's a beautiful, beautiful animal. Really a top-notch example of a Suriname true red tail boa. So it's Pretty excited about growing up these two males and getting them into breeding trials probably maybe four years from now, hopefully, just so they can pass on their genes to the next generation and continue this project here at Ryan Boas. And there's a close-up of this guy. Just do a quick pan here. This guy's actually kind of holding still for a change, unlike the other guy. Take a look at that tail. It's hard to beat a tail like this on a Suriname true red tail. Doesn't get much better than that. Okay, shifting gears here. This is a, one of my first babies born in 2021. This is a Pearl Island boa and not surprisingly, she's not sitting still. This is a type of boa known for being somewhat more active. Let me try to calm her down a bit. And hopefully she'll sit still for just a minute here, but uh, maybe not. But anyway, beautiful Pearl Island boa to add to my breeding group. I have a couple holdbacks from two years ago, and I just added this female as well. This next boa should be a little bit more uh, cooperative for the camera. This is a uh, long tail boa, a longicata boa. And 2021 was my first year to produce these, and really excited about that. This is one of the nice little guys from the litter, although all of the babies in this litter look pretty similar, so there really wasn't nearly as much of a difference as I've seen in some of my other uh, bow litters. But I kept the pair for myself to grow up for future breeders. And so this is the male. So you can move around a little bit. 
these guys are real typically pretty mellow and docile just a nice boa to handle and interact with and there's a close-up you can see his big beautiful eyes and I love the shape of their heads and one thing to note about these boas is that they change a lot as they get bigger they start out relatively light like this but this guy is going to darken up a lot in the next few years and as adults they're mostly black with some kind of lighter tannish yellowish brownish uh, markings and uh, you can see he's got some reddish the red kind of goes away and it's mostly a, a dark black and kind of off-white tan snake so it'll be interesting to see how this guy develops they all develop a little bit differently but looking at the parents I kind of know what to expect and real cool ball hoping to produce another litter of these longicata in 2022 here's the female longicata and uh, you can see she looks pretty similar to the male Maybe we can get her to move around a little bit for the camera. One thing to note about these guys is they're just really tiny babies. These ones are now three months old and they're still eating fuzzy mice. Not quite up to the hopper size. In fact, I think they're probably the smallest baby boas I've seen. Probably even smaller than my Tarahimara and my Kralki dwarf boas. And uh, they don't really grow all that fast either. But as adults, they can get up to, you know, five or six feet long. And there's a close-up of the female. Just give you a look at her markings and color there. Mostly pretty docile. Some of the babies, did, you know, kind of strike out me, at me a little bit. They're kind of programmed to be a little more aggressive. But I don't think any of them actually bit me. They just kind of strike out, not unlike my... Tarahimara and my other dwarf boas. Pretty entertaining actually. Here's a beautiful holdback male from a relatively rare type of boa. This is a Honduran firebelly boa and this is actually my third year producing them. Decided to hold back a pair for future breeders. This is the male I picked and quite an amazing looking animal. You can see he has quite a bit of reduction of pattern and striping. Let's see if we can see his whole body here. But this particular project, I think I've kind of taken in the patternless direction. You can see how he's got very few saddles. And I'm not typically, I'm not big on striped or patternless boas, but I think it looks really cool in these Honduran fire bellies. Just amazing to see once this guy has his adult coloration, the beautiful salmon pink belly and the mostly patternless, you know, dorsal surface. You can see some really nice color developing in this guy already. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but then you can see the really cool tail with the kind of dark reddish, brownish blotches. These Honduran fire bellies have the coolest looking eyes, just these big reddish brown eyes that kind of bulge out. And then you can see most of his body's patternless, so Really cool look along with the salmon, uh, yellow pink belly, or orange pink belly I should say. It was a female that I held back from the hunter and fire belly litter. You can see this female has a little bit more saddles than the male, but you can see the striping towards the tail there, the lack of pattern on the tail, just a cool look. And you know, when I started breeding these guys, I didn't think I was going to try to select for patternless ones, but it's something that came up and I really thought it was a cool look. So that's kind of where I'm taking this project. And we'll just have to see what the next generation looks like once uh, these animals are ready to breed. I have some animals from 2018 that were held back, which will be ready to go in a couple of years. So stay tuned for that. And there's her beautiful, big reddish brown eyes there. Really cool look. I love their short stubby heads as well. So that was a look at a few of the animals I decided to hold back in 2021 and raise up as future breeders. Hopefully it gave you a pretty good idea about what I'm going to be producing in 2022. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. 
Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.